Hi everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne. This video is put together to take a look at Twitter. This was from our latest tech talk on use of Twitter and how to make sense of it and how to use it in our classroom and socially. Um, so I go through on, on my website, wiobyrne.com, all of these materials. Uh, right now is the latest link because it's the newest one that's been posted, but Basically, I take a look at Twitter, and there's a couple things that we need to know when we're using Twitter as a tool. Uh, first of all, the nice thing about Twitter is that it's open and that it's a global conversation. So you can, you know, for the most part, butt in on conversations that others are having. Uh, unlike email that's closed and it's pretty much one to uh, one conversations or one to, new, you know, a couple people. Uh, imagine email being totally open so anyone in the world can take a look into your emails and see what you're talking about. If you understand that concept, then Twitter could be a powerful tool. So the, the challenge is, how do we discuss things on Twitter? Well, a lot of times people will see this hashtag that's used in a Twitter message. A hashtag is basically like a subject line in an email. So for example, if I send out a tweet that has pound ed chat in it, then basically every, anybody else that's interested in chatting about education, they'll be able to see my tweet. So if I take a look at my Twitter feed right now, uh, you could see earlier, I talked about some uh, Pew internet research. We talked about online political activism. I shared something on uh, math instruction, and I shared it with the EdChat community. I shared it with Matt Chat, Math Chat, and so basically anybody that's interested in talking about math and, and instructional uses of math, uh, instructional options in math, they would be interested in that, and they'd be able to follow along. I put a link in there to see where these chats are, because a lot of times these chats have real-time chats that occur online. So, for example, you'll notice that on Tuesdays. Uh, the Ed Chat happens twice, so from noon Eastern Standard uh, to 1 and then 7 to 8 Eastern Standard, there's an Ed Chat that occurs. So you can go online and globally have a discussion on Twitter with numerous people around the world. Uh, and they're, they're pretty popular, I mean there's other hashtags that are available, you can click on that link to see. But the challenge is that you can only imagine the amount of information that's coming through at all times. So if I'm looking at mine, I have, you know, it, within seconds I have new tweets coming in. And a lot of times people new to Twitter will take a look at this and say, I have no ability or no desire to follow through and read all of these tweets because it basically becomes uh, too much. It's a fire hose of information. And so the challenge is that you need to understand that you don't need to and you for the most part really don't want to read all that information so you'll see as we're talking I have three new tweets in the short amount of time I've been talking here okay and you really don't want to and I don't really follow all of this stuff so the challenge would be how do we make sense of it what I suggest is I use apps so on my desktop I use TweetDeck or Hootsuite in Chrome as my browser on my phone, my Android phone, I use Plume. Uh, also on the iPad and the iPhone, Hootsuite is a great tool to use. And what I do is I put together columns. So let's say I'm following EdChat. You can see right now there are a lot of people sharing stuff for EdChat. I can very quickly go through and follow and read through what people are talking about. Same thing for iPad Chat. I can see that there's tons of resources in here that I can take a look at. Common Core State Standards Chat. Um, I can see, okay, well, how can I use uh, character analysis in my classroom to take a look at Common Core? So this is a great professional development tool, and basically I set it up so that in TweetDeck I have a column that I can follow. But even still, that might be a little bit too much for people to use uh, Twitter with. So a couple of the things that I think that you should take a look at. Uh, to keep it real simple, sometimes people like to make a little newspaper out of their links. So I follow a lot of people on Twitter and I use a service like Paperly or NewsMe, they're pretty much the same thing, to make sense and aggregate or synthesize this information. So what I have here is I have my quote unquote newspaper that Digitally Literate puts out. 
So this is a bunch of the different tweets and messages that come through. So this is uh, Sylvia sent out a piece on how to combat plagiarism. That would be interesting to me, how mind maps can inspire collaborative learning. So basically it looks through all my tweets and finds the top tweets that I would probably be interested in. This also will go through and take a look at video that I might be interested in based upon what people are sharing online. Um, I have separate sections, ones on education, ones on technology. I have photos that people are sharing, uh, stories. But basically, I review the top area, and that's about it. And this comes in my email box daily. Uh, there's also other apps that will do a great job uh, pulling in Twitter, Facebook, and also Google Reader Feeds. Uh, I'm a big fan of Feedly. I've been using Feedly for a long time. Uh, basically, it looks like this. It'll take all my Google Reader feeds and stuff that people share on Facebook and Twitter, and it'll put it into a nice magazine that I can read. Uh, this is pretty much the same way that it looks on my phone and my iPad. So I can scroll down and say, okay, uh, I want to take a look at what's happening in education and say, oh, this looks like an interesting article I want to read. And if I click on it, it'll give me a little summary and I can click further and then read the whole piece from the website. So it's basically a powerful way to keep track of what's happening because there's tons of stuff happening every day. And when you are trying to take a drink from this fire hose of information, it can be a challenge. I also recommend Zite. Um, I use Zite a little too often on my iPad and my phone. Flipboard and Pulse I don't use as often, but there's a lot of people that love them. Uh, the last thing I wanted to share was for super advanced people, the app that I share is called Bottlenose. I've been using this more and more often. Uh, and like I said, this is a real super advanced app, but it is kind of cool to see how things interrelate. So what will happen is it will look on my Twitter feed, it will look in my social networks, and it will basically tell me what other people are talking about. So it will look for trends across different sections of what people are reading about. So, I mean, it, it can be very fun to take a look at, uh, but there's a lot of information here. And so for people that, you know, power users that really want to take a look at how things interconnect, it is a fun way to take a look at what conversations are happening. But this is very advanced, very high functioning. And this is basically for people that want to take a look at social media and see what conversations are happening out there and then also how everything interrelates. So this is Bottlenose. I've been playing with this a little bit, but this might be a little too high functioning for most of us that just want to figure out how to use Twitter. So once again, we're taking a look at the use of Twitter. Uh, I think it's a powerful tool in our classroom. I think it's a powerful tool to use with our students. One of the key challenges is that we, as educators, we first need to get on Twitter and use it. Twitter is an incredible PD tool, and the first step really is get yourself a Twitter account. After you have an account, go on, get yourself an app. I suggested TweetDeck or HootSuite, um, and I mentioned a couple others down below. And then after you have that app, I'd also suggest using one of these apps here, like a service like Paperly or NewsMe to make a little newspaper, something that every single morning you get, and it's basically a newspaper of stuff that people are sharing online. So that's our look at Twitter.